Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today we have another episode of Fifty Shades of Phuket. This is the fourth in the series where he discusses the evidence for the axial tilt of the Earth. Well, there it is. Thank you all for stopping by, and make sure you hit the little like and subscribe button down in the lower right corner. No, actually, I think we're probably going to have to do a little more than that. But that's a start. Number four, axial tilt. This assumption that uh, the Earth is tilted and as it goes round the sun we get the seasons because of this axial tilt. Uh, this is something that can never, ever, ever be verified whatsoever. Well, although Phuket doesn't believe we have evidence or I guess visual evidence, I've already shown it in the introduction sequence. What you have to do is you have to demonstrate how light plays out on a spherical body. And the best way to do that is get a ball and a light. Fortunately, I have 8-inch balls. Okay, fellow scientists, let's go ahead and have a look at our setup. On the right, we have an 8-inch styrofoam sphere. On the left, we have a flashlight, and that flashlight is set up at right about the level of the equator of that sphere. Now, you'll notice you'll see a terminator line, and that is the difference between the areas of the sphere that are lit by the flashlight and the areas that are still dark. Now, here I've drawn a yellow line from more or less the center of the light to the equator of the sphere and to the equator on the opposite side of the sphere. Now here you'll notice that I drew a red line and I connected the top of the terminator line to the bottom of the terminator line. And as you can see, that red line forms a right angle with the yellow line. If the light was exactly 90 degrees to the sphere from our point of view, that line would go straight down. However, as you can see, it bows out a little bit to the right, which means that the angle to the flashlight is actually a little bit less than 90 degrees, and it's a little closer to us than perpendicular. Now, just to show you that the same thing occurs when you're dealing with a light that is greater than 90 degrees from our point of view, and we have a crescent-shaped terminator line. I've gone ahead and done it here, and as you can see, it forms a right angle. Now, the take-home message here is that simply by looking at the top and the bottom of the terminator line, we can determine the perpendicular to the light source. So why is this all important? Well, let's look at this image of Earth. You see the actual tips of the terminator lines have a line connecting them. The illuminating sun is to the left and perpendicular to that line. So that establishes the orbital plane of the Earth. Down at about the 8 o'clock position, you will see a short arrow. That is the direction of the rotation of the Earth. Now, if the Earth was not rotating on a tilted axis, rotation would basically be in line with that long line and perpendicular to it, and it would go directly from the left to the right. On the images, you can clearly see it rotates at an angle. That means the axis of the Earth is tilted with the northern hemisphere closer to the sun than the southern hemisphere is. This probe was launched in August, so that would make sense with the seasons. Now this is the messenger probe. It was launched on August 3rd, 2004. This is the first 24 hours as it recedes from Earth towards Mercury. As you can tell, the Earth is rotating. You can clearly see the terminator lines as the Earth recedes to get an idea of where the Sun is. And you can see that the rotation is going up and to the right. Just look at it and convince yourself a little bit. Now, in addition to showing that the axis of the Earth is tilted in this photograph or a series of um, videos, it also shows the Earth is spherical and rotating. So that's pretty much game over for Flat Earth, but we'll continue to beat the dead horse a little bit. Well, I can hear the Flat Earthers complaining already. Space isn't real. We don't have space probes. It's all NASA CGI. You know, the bottom line is if they accepted photos from space or video from space, even showing rotation as that one I just put up, there wouldn't be a debate anymore. You know, the Earth is spherical. 
and we can prove it with photographs, but they can't accept photographs. So let's go ahead and do something from the ground that everybody can do. Now, obviously, the seasons are a direct result of axial tilt and the orbit around the sun. But let's go ahead and go with this one. This is the solar analemma. Now let's look at this diagram. In the middle on the right, you'll see a line that says the equator. This is the position of the sun, and twice a year, the sun is directly over the equator. That would be the March and the September equinox. In March, the sun starts heading north, and up in June, we get a June solstice. And then as it comes back, we cross the equator again, and then we go down to the December solstice and then back up to the equator and the process repeats. Notice that the small loop is towards the north and the large loop points to the south. So let's go ahead and have a look at this in some real photographs, time-lapse photographs, from the Earth. All right, now here's a, a solar analemma and we can tell an awful lot just by looking at this. First of all, the small loop is towards the right and lower than the large loop, which is towards the left. Where's this solar analemma taken? It's in the southern hemisphere. We're looking west. Now in June, which is winter in the southern hemisphere, notice that the sun is setting relatively early and the tip of the solar analemma is dipping below the horizon. In December, which is the height of summer in the southern hemisphere, the solar analemma and the sun is high in the sky. Now the way you take these solar analemmas is you take a photograph of the sun at the same time every day for a year. So we can see the seasons and and we can tell where the solar analemma is taken, even the time of day. Now, if you measure the solar analemma from top to bottom, you will find that it encompasses about 47 degrees of the sky, and that is twice the axial tilt of 23.7 degrees. At the midpoint of the solar analemma, that is where the sun is when it is directly over the equator. And by looking at the declination above the ground at 12 noon, you can actually determine your latitude in the southern hemisphere. You can do the same thing in the northern hemisphere. Blue Marble Science and I did that last March at the uh, March equinox. Nothing at all. Uh, it's, it's never been seen. It's never been measured. Nothing. All we have are illustrations and assumptions. Now, before we move on to the next section, I want to go ahead and go over this concept of a sidereal year. Now, imagine that there is a star 90 degrees overhead at position E1. Three months later, that star will be right on the horizon at dawn. And then as the Earth continues to go around in its orbit, that star will be hidden by the sun. And by the time it gets over to about where the 3 o'clock position would be on that orbit, we'll start seeing it right at sunset. And then when we get back up to E1, it'll be directly overhead again. That's how we determine how long a year is. Also add to that, um, that you know, the, the, the speeds that the Earth is said to be spinning or orbiting the sun have never, ever been measured. Seriously, man? Don't you always quote to us that the Earth spins at 1,040 miles an hour at the equator? Did you just make that number up? No, we know the circumference of the Earth, and it rotates once every 24 hours. That can be measured too. And then it's just a simple matter of math. It is about 1,040 miles an hour at the equator. You can look back at uh, some of the experiments done, mickelson morley and uh, various other experiments to try and measure the speed that we are allegedly traveling through space or around the sun or spinning. Dude, if you're going to talk about the Michelson-Morley experiment, you ought to at least know what the Michelson-Morley experiment was. It had nothing to do with the orbital speed or the rotational speed of the Earth. It was trying to measure ether drag on light. Really. None of this has ever, ever been confirmed in the field of science. There is no measurable proof of axial tilt or the speeds of spin or anything related to the idea that we are on a spinning globe orbiting the sun in a heliocentric model. Nothing. Well, I'll tell you something. I really have to admire Nick for his consistency over there at Phuket Word. You know, here we have a rotating spherical Earth with an axial tilt in 11 seconds. 
how much more evidence do you need? You know, you can't just constantly dismiss everything. Now, on top of this, of course, we did the solar analemma, which demonstrates axial tilt. We did the seasons, which also demonstrates axial tilt. Now, the one thing that we did not do was the celestial coordinate system. And we can literally map our path through the stars. Then we can also use Kepler's laws to determine our orbital distance. And once we have our orbital distance from the sun, and we can get our orbital speed. It's really not all that difficult. I mean, you can do it on your dining room table. And as a matter of fact, I've done videos on that. So I guess that pretty much beats this one to death too. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Take a moment, hit that little like and subscribe. You know, we're close to our goal at the end of August. So if you guys could go ahead and click us real quick. If you're not already subscribed, we'd love to have you on board. So we'll see you a little bit later and thanks for stopping by.